All right, good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist for Misha Shade. Happy Monday. Of course, last week it was all about Debbie. Of course, Debbie did strengthen to a category one hurricane making landfall right around the big bend of Florida, dumping over a foot of rain for parts of the big bend of Florida, for parts of the Florida Peninsula, and then riding up along the east coast of the U.S., dumping over a foot of rain, maybe one and a half feet of rain up around the Carolinas for some spots and even up into Pennsylvania and New York, several inches of rain. So it's a new week, but it's also time to talk about a new storm. In fact, the National Hurricane Center, as of the last couple of minutes, has now named our fifth storm of this 2024 hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin, and it is Ernesto. It is a tropical storm in the western portion of the Atlantic. So to review, we've had five named storms so far this season. Alberto, which was a tropical storm that made landfall along the Mexican Gulf Coast. Barrel, which at one point was a category five monstrous hurricane, of course, hitting us right here in Houston as a category 180 mile per hour hurricane back on July 8th and still we are trying to recover from the damage left from barrel. Of course, Chris was a very brief tropical storm with another Mexican Gulf Coast landfall. And of course, last week we had Debbie strengthening to a category one hurricane and making landfall right around Florida. There was another landfall around the South Carolina coast and then it wreaked havoc all up and down the east coast of the US, bringing a significant flash flood threat. Now we've got to talk about our storm for this week. And this one's name, like I said, is Ernesto. But before we get to Ernesto, let's look at our first four named storms. And unfortunately, they were all Gulf Coast landfalls. So we've been kind of unlucky right around the Gulf Coast of the U.S., the Mexican Gulf Coast. Of course, Hurricane Barrel, Hurricane Debbie making landfall along the U.S. Gulf Coast and Tropical Storm Alberto, Tropical Storm Chris making landfall along the Mexican Gulf Coast. So. We hope to keep the rest of these storms the rest of the season out of the Gulf Coast and it looks like we may be fortunate on this next storm, Ernesto. It looks like it might stay away, but we're still monitoring it closely. But here is a look at Ernesto on our tropical satellite. You can see the bright plume of oranges and reds. Those are the showers and storms trying to get more organized pushing towards some of those Caribbean islands. Still not extremely organized right now, but it did have 30 mi 35 mile per hour winds and now those winds are up to 40 miles per hour. So it is officially a tropical storm and it is starting to get better organized and it's gonna move into an area that will allow it to get better organized and likely strengthen as it gets closer to the Northeastern Caribbean and some of those Caribbean islands. So we are concerned that this could become a hurricane pretty quickly in the next day or so. So here's the latest with Tropical Storm Ernesto. As of the 4 p.m. advisory, movement is to the west, northwest, right around 28 miles per hour, and we've got pressure around 1,009 millibars, and we've got the maximum sustained winds right around 40 miles per hour, and the next official update will likely come around 9, 10 o'clock, but of course we may get an intermediate advisory in between them, but for now, 40 mile per hour winds. You can see the Leeward Islands here. Here's Puerto Rico. There's Hispaniola. So it's getting closer to land, and that means significant impacts possible for some of these Caribbean islands. Notice that by 1 a.m. Tuesday morning, starting to push over parts of the northern Leeward Islands with likely 45 mile per hour winds. Look what happens though by late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. This is 1 a.m. Wednesday. It blows up to a 60 mile per hour tropical storm as it is rolling right over the eastern portion of Puerto Rico, getting very close to San Juan, Puerto Rico. So not quite hurricane status as it pushes over Puerto Rico, but it will be very close. So heavy rain, strong, gusty, possibly damaging wind possible for some of Puerto Rico. Then as it starts to push away from Puerto Rico, it makes more of a turn to the northwest and then more of a curve to the north as it gets into that very warm water and it really starts to strengthen 70 mile per hour winds likely by Wednesday afternoon. Thursday morning, likely 80 mile per hour wind. So that would put it at a category one hurricane status. And models even have it strengthening to a category two as we go into the middle of the week as it gets closer to Bermuda. So notice the main thing here. 
It is going to be a very strong tropical storm, likely a category two hurricane, but <clears throat> It does stay away from the east coast of the US, so that is certainly some good news. So we're not expecting it to push into the Gulf of Mexico. We're not expecting it to get extremely close to the east coast of the US. That was hammered last week by what was left of Debbie with all of that heavy rain. Instead, it is going to move to the north and east. It's going to take that turn and likely stay away from the U.S. So that is certainly some good news for the U.S. But of course, folks in Bermuda watching this closely because it could be a category two, maybe category three hurricane as it heads close to Bermuda. So close to a major hurricane potentially impacting parts of Bermuda by the middle and end of the week. All right, here is our exclusive Fox model future cast showing the Ernesto likely wrapping up, getting tighter, getting more organized and notice it is getting close to the northern leeward islands as we go into the next 24 hours rolling right over parts of Puerto Rico by Wednesday morning. This is right around 10 a.m. Wednesday morning pushing right over Puerto Rico with heavy rain, strong wind. Of course, those dangerous rip currents, storm surge, not expected to be a really, really significant system by then, still likely a tropical storm, but as it starts to turn north and move away from Puerto Rico, that's when it really starts to wrap up, tighten up and intensify, turning into a hurricane likely by Wednesday and Thursday, maybe a category two hurricane. So we're gonna have to monitor Ernesto closely, even though it doesn't appear to have a major impact on the US, it's still gonna have some impacts to parts of the Caribbean islands. Maybe you have a cruise planned in the Eastern Caribbean, maybe you have a trip plan to Puerto Rico or the U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, there will definitely be more significant impacts there. And later on in the week, we'll have to watch Bermuda closely because it looks like Ernesto will head up that way. We have been expecting a very busy hurricane season. And of course, the latest forecast from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and from Colorado State University meteorologists are calling for a lot of tropical systems. So we're still expecting as of that August update from NOAA, 17 to 24 name storms, eight to 13 of those becoming hurricanes and four to seven of those becoming major hurricanes. CSU's latest forecast update calling for 23 name storms out of those 12 becoming hurricanes and six becoming major hurricanes. Our average for our hurricane season taken from 1991 to 2020, about 14 named storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. So we're still close to the beginning of August or getting to the middle of August. And we've already had as of this afternoon, five named storms. We've had two hurricanes and one major hurricane so far. So we are still in that average category, but of course, we are getting to the much more active portion of hurricane season. Typically, late August, all of September, really through early October. So we could add several name storms to that list, maybe a few more hurricanes, major hurricanes, not out of the question. So we are closely monitoring things because like you can see, we're starting to get to the point of the season where things usually get really active, really busy, and you need to stay alert. When things are quiet, that's the time to make sure you have all of your supplies needed. If we were hit by another tropical storm, another hurricane, make sure you know your evacuation routes, make sure you know your flood threat in your area, and make sure you have access to those flood insurance papers and any other insurance papers that you may need and make sure they're in a safe spot. If you do get flooded, you don't want them to wash away. So just go over those things and just make sure that you are prepared. But of course, nothing is going on or heading towards Houston now, but we've still got a long ways to go for the rest of this hurricane season. 